Box video update for you. I'm going to update you on both this kit box 4 with the Apex and then the other kit box 4 1050 gross with the Yamaha Phaser. So I'll give you a quick peek of what I've been doing over the summer on this and then we'll jump over to the airport and go fly the Phaser Fox. So let's get right to it. I've been making slow but steady progress on this airplane. I'm currently working on this exhaust. This exhaust is titanium tubing from a Yamaha R1 motorcycle, which happens to be what this engine is based on, just has no transmission for a snowmobile application, which makes it good for airplanes. So I uh, recycled some tubing from a couple R1 headers, was able to fabricate what you see here. It's just tacked together right now. And I think it's gonna work out good. Save me a couple pounds, which is gonna help me offset the weight of this engine with a couple other tricks I'm doing. I got my gear built. Uh, if you saw the last video, I made this in CAD. I designed it to work around these shocks that are actually used on the Yamaha Apex snowmobile, the Fox shocks. I'm a big fan of these shocks because I'm an avid mountain biker. And these are really popular shocks on the mountain bikes. They're just smaller. So you can easily adjust the air pressure, which is like the compression rate on these shocks with a little hand pump that you can uh, easily stow like in a glove box even. It's a really handy thing to have. And I'm using a similar shock back here in the tail wheel for my prototype tail wheel design. It has air pressure as well. And this is something I had made in CAD, 3D printed. Now I have this version on the plane, which is just loosely bolted on so I could check uh, the geometry and everything. I'm gonna make this a manually unlock tail wheel, kind of like I see on super stoles. So I got it to where I can move it around the shop now at least. The suspension does work. Here, I'll prop the camera on the ground and I'll show you how it moves around. Okay, here we go. So obviously you can adjust the air pressure in there and the dampening, which is pretty cool. A lot better than a, a leaf spring, which is basically just a piece of metal that flexes like Kit Fox has on there originally. That will work, but for what I'm doing, why not make it the best I can since I had the chance to build this thing from scratch. So this is my idea. See if it works. If not, I'll change the design and make it work that way. So I showed you guys last video about the wheels and tires I'm using. I had 3D printed these hubs to work with this ATV based aluminum rim to work on these Desser 27.5 tires because these are eight inch rims. And you know, you can't really off the shelf buy a lot of stuff that I wanted to do on this. So what I ended up doing is having my, my hubs I designed in there that interfaces the rim which fits on the tire. And then I have a dirt bike based rotor and I'm using these Brembo brake calipers. So that should give me plenty of stopping force because I'm sick of not having good brakes on a Kit Fox. And this is cool because it's kind of recycling stuff I had around. I think it will be really good performance and it doesn't break the bank to do it. So here's the engine mount I came up with. I built this tacked it together and then I had a professional welder do the TIG welding on it because I really don't want the engine falling off. So let the professionals do that part. Turned out pretty good. I'm gonna have the oil tank somewhere in here. I think that will work good. I'm gonna make my own air box, which I have yet to do. Have the dummy flange printed on here so I could build the engine mount around the, around the Skytrex gearbox, which is Pretty much the only option for this engine and proven has a lot of flight time and hours on it so going with that so for the cowl which i plan on hand making there's a few options to do that the most common i see is people wrap their engine in like saran wrap you put expanding foam all over the place and then you like take a turkey knife and carve it and sand it and do all that so I'm not the most artistic person I don't have a good eye for that but I can do CAD drawings pretty well. So my plan is to design the cowl and CAD, which is cool because I can make a miniature version of the firewall engine 
test fit it, all that, get it how I like it. Then I'm going to get it printed in full scale and I'm going to use that to pull a mold off it. Once I have that mold, I can pop out the cowl and carbon fiber or fiberglass or whatever I end up doing and get it exactly how I want it to be without relying on my non-existent artistic skills. Uh, let's see, what else can I show you? I 3D printed, 3D printed some custom grips. Maybe you guys will think this is cool. Actually, this is not attached. I'm just gonna pull it out. What do you think about that? You got the push to talk, a smoke button, because you know I love my smoke of my ultralight. And then this plane has electric trim on the tail, so I made some buttons for that. I don't know, it turned out pretty cool. I actually printed some carbon uh, some carbon versions of this, so they're not as shiny and they look more like uh, matte, pure carbon. And then on the other side, you know, got the ejection seat because that'll be fun to take people for rides. Really, it's the push the talk button, but I thought that was cool. It's experimental, I can do what I want, right? So I've been noticing that some of the Super Soul guys are going to a pod style panel. And I'm gonna use a uh, real simple glass panel with maybe like, you know, one steam gauge, couple switches, as simple as possible. It's gonna be, I'm trying to keep it light, you know? So, got this big, huge engine. I'm gonna make everything as simple and light as possible. So I think about, I'm thinking about going super simple glass panel. And if I'm doing that, I, I kinda got it sketched out what it was gonna look like on the panel here. So I really don't need all this room. I thought about putting a glove box and all that. And yeah, I like the traditional look. Could do like a carbon panel and keep it pretty light. But I think I'm going to go the pod style. I'll put in a picture here that I've seen on a Super Stole group. I just think it's cool. And then I could, I could put uh, clear plexi on the sides, maybe stretch the windshield down further, make it kind of a unique thing. So... I'm leaning towards doing that, not 100% set on it, but as of right now, I really like that idea. So the name of the game with this build is to keep the front as light as possible, and then I'm gonna move as much weight back as possible to offset this big, powerful engine. So I'm gonna move the header tank back as far as I can. I'm gonna put the battery as far back as I can. Um, I'm gonna do a few other little things making uh you know possibly that pod design we talked about for the panel very simple lightweight panel this gear uh built to be as light as possible for this style cabane gear obviously tubeless tires lightweight rims uh the shocks are lightweight everything is trying to be light the, the cowl is probably going to be carbon and we're just saving weight everywhere we can I really think this airplane is going to be a performer and I have so much fun flying the other uh, Kit Fox with the phaser in it and you know to most people that thing is pretty good performance and a lot of fun to fly and I agree but after flying ultralights and flying some other high performance airplanes I'm just the type of person that needs like the extreme side of things so I think this engine on this airframe is going to be perfect for me I can't wait to see the performance I would be thrilled if I could take off and land with full fuel from my backyard, um, which is only 500 foot cut into like a cornfield, so no obstructions besides the corn if it's grown. Um, and cruise like 100 miles an hour, is that possible? We'll see. I'll obviously streamline everything I can on the gear, make it as slippery as possible because I got these big draggy tires on it, of course, to make up. So we'll see how close we get, but the Phaser Fox flies about 85 miles an hour. So we're only talking about another 15 miles an hour with double the horsepower. I think it should be possible. So to those of you that have made it this far in the talking part of the video and not the skipped right to the flying part like I probably would have done, let me know in the comments if you enjoy seeing the progress of me blabbing to the camera about what I've done. If you don't care, that's fine. I'll just keep building it. You'll probably be much more interested once it's done and flying, as I will be. So let's just go over to the airport and get some flying done. Okay, the only thing I gotta do is put air in the tail wheel because it looks a little low and then we're good to go.
All right, YouTube. Hope the audio's working. Getting strapped in here. All right. Start her up. Gotta love that fuel injection. I'm testing out a new speed module today that locks the speed out of the one mile per hour um, to avoid code 42. So I had the other module that matches your airspeed. And now I'm developing this one just to show one mile per hour as a cheaper option because honestly, since the pandemic happened, the chip to get the airspeed uh, basically the parts to make the airspeed version got super expensive and it's just not worth it to make them so this would be a cheap option just to get rid of the code shows one mile per hour hopefully that leaves code 42 away I don't know if it's gonna work we're gonna find out right now so if code 42 doesn't pop up it works if it does back to the drawing board on that little bypass with this new thing I'm trying out tonight all right, oil temps coming up. Field elevation is 920. It's about 80 degrees. Pretty calm winds right now. Let's uh, taxi round. Richmond traffic experimental kit Fox departing runway 18, staying in the pattern. Richmond. Okay, temperature's good. Everything's good. Got my flaps in. Let's do it. And I pitched for about 50, 50 solo. So I'm reading about 600 foot a minute on steam gauge and about the same on my app. So I guess I guess it isn't too far off. See if we can coordinate up a little bit here. Yeah, I would call it a 600 foot a minute on an 80 degree day. Let's try a little faster. Yep, I would say 600 foot a minute. Nice calm air today. Well, I'm not seeing that code pop up so far. So, so far my uh, one mile per hour bypass chip is tricking the ECU to keep that, fo that code 42 at bay. And it's just annoying, it doesn't affect the way it runs, but it blinks the code, shows you RPM, blinks the code, so with this, now I can see my RPM. I'm at 8,900 right now. It shows one mile per hour, no codes. And if I did get an uh, engine error code, um, I could I could see what's going on because I wouldn't already be flashing check engine. So I'm right at 1,000 foot. I'm going to level off. Put her in cruise mode. at 8,700 RPM. Still going up a little bit. We'll get it up on the step. Point traffic. Two right point downwind. Runway one five. All right, so now I'm pulling it back to about uh, 80, looks like 8,700. Going about 80 miles an hour. Let's see if it does a nine grand. That's about nine grand. Going up a little bit.
It looks like, uh, I would say 85 miles an hour. Getting 85 my GPS, 85 in the airspeed. Pretty calm out tonight, I believe it. It's actually climbing a tiny bit. Yeah, 85. 85 at 9 grand. Pretty respectable. So, I was just knocking the cobwebs off off camera there, kind of yanking and banking a little bit, feeling it out. It's like riding a bike. Love the kid box, man. They fly so good. Mostly, I tried to explain how light the controls are to people, but I'm like, you don't understand, like this thing, this, look at this. One finger, I just like, feels like a little mini stunt plane or something. I love it. So, it really seems to like anywhere between eight and 9,000 for cruising around. It will rev up uh, the way I've been pitched now, you know, almost a 10,000. The red line in his engine is 12.5. Um, so, just kind of get the best fuel burn you can and playing around with the prop pitch and, you know, there might be a better gear ratio. I got the 2.62 C-Box on here right now. The power fin prop. The way we have it pitched now, I'd say it's more towards cruise than uh, than uh, taking off short. All right, we are downwind for three six. About to turn base here in a second. if we still got what it takes. Give her a little slip here. Love how kit boxes fly, man. one back. We're definitely going to have to try to do better though. Okay, on this one, I'll try to pay attention to how short I can take off. Pretty familiar with this airport, so I got some markers that uh, I measured out before. on the cones here. Okay. Richmond traffic, kit box apartment 18 in the pattern Richmond. Here we go. That's about 300 foot. About 700 foot a minute. Might be cooling off a little bit out there. I would say six to seven hundred foot a minute at 80 degree days, about what it does. I'm in full fuel. I got, I think, 18 gallons on board, plus me, no passenger. Okay, guys, more speed tests here. Thousand RPM, maintaining altitude, 84 miles an hour. Let's go to the 9500. Nine. 
Indy 500 equals about 91 miles per hour. Let's go flat out. Getting about a touch under 10,000 RPM, so it's about 95 miles an hour. Well, it feels comfortable between eight and nine grand for the engine. It's like a comfortable cruise. I think over nine grand, I would guess that you're just throwing fuel at it. You are going faster, but I'm sure your gallons per hour go way down. If you keep between eight and nine grand like I have been, I've been getting three to three and a half gallons an hour. Yeah, so, uh, you know, flying around normally, I tend to be 8,500 to 9,000 it seems for what I like to do. And I'm, I'm usually above 80 miles an hour, 80 to 85 miles an hour. So if I was going somewhere, that's probably what I'd calculate for the speed wise. It will go 95 miles an hour flat out, but who flies around like that? That's pretty good for this little motor though. I cannot wait to get the Apex Fox done. That thing is going to be a rocket. This thing is fun with this 500cc 80 horsepower motor. I can't imagine. 150 horse. It's just going to be so fun. Really cool plane. And that's one thing, owning this kit box I know all the shortfalls of it. I know what I wish it had. I know what it lacks. So as I'm building the one I'm building now, I can make sure all that stuff is covered. You know, the landing gear, the interior, the panel, just all the little things that I've noticed over the years. Like, man, I wish I had this, I wish I had that. It's just all gonna be taken care of. It's gonna be like basically my dream plane because I know everything it needs. Can't wait to get it done. In the meantime, this thing is still a blast to fly. Hopefully I got all the audio on the GoPro. Uh, did some more testing. It was about six to seven hundred foot a minute. It's 80 degrees out. I'm at a thousand foot uh, MSL at the field here. And cruise with the way the prop is pitched, which I think it needs to be adjusted a little bit, but I'm getting an honest 85 miles an hour. Uh, somewhere in the 8,500 to 9,000 RPM range. I think you could probably pitch it a little better for uh, 80 degrees, but yeah, it's good enough. And I could take off, um, you know, I'm not, I haven't flown this thing all summer, so I'm not like the best right now. But, you know, 300 foot's easy. You could do much shorter than that, I'm sure. Uh, yanking the flaps and doing some tricks and stuff, but I'm happy with it. It's as good or better than the 582 was in this thing. And, you know, I, I really think it's a big improvement. It just has a lot of bonuses over the two stroke. No mixing oil. You know, the, the reliability of this is, you know, in theory, better. And, you know, it just works really good. It has been sitting all summer. I came here, turned the key, started right up. No messing around. It's just really, it's like a car. You know, nice fuel-injected engine. You can't beat that. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Next one, I'll do some uh, ultralight flying. I've been doing a lot of that this summer. And we're getting into a good season for that when they start harvesting the crops and I can land all over the, f the fields and stuff. And then, uh, you know, get in the wintertime, some buddies want to do some ski flying in the lakes. So maybe we'll do like an ice fishing adventure, um, 
with the ultralights as our transportation to get to the cool spots. So that'd be fun. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as I get progress done on the Kit Fox, the other Kit Fox Apex, I'll uh, make another video. Thanks. Thanks.